model rocks three two one here welcome back to the channel once again today I'm going to talk about um, sanding filling and painting rockets um, I had a commenter in one of my videos ask about do I have a video on just that process and how I get uh, nice finishes on fins and things like that and I didn't I know in my Saturn one build video there's a I talked about um, priming and stuff like that so I decided to just do a dedicated video thanks to that subscriber so um, the first thing I do or anybody should do after you build the model then take your time building it getting it all getting all the fins lined up getting it really nice in the next process after that is to go ahead and fill those spiral lines that are in the um, SD's body tube and most rockets you get will have this spiral line right here I guess it's doing the manufacturing you'll get that line um, however these are made so once you have that the first thing, go ahead and find some wood filler. I've been using Memwax. This is pretty cool stuff. Um, I typically don't like this process, just to let you know. I always mention it. I don't like it to get really messy, trying to fill uh, spirals and in the balsa wood. So I've, I've been using this Memwax. I take it and I fill it into that spiral line. This is just a demo piece of a body tube, just to show you how that process looks. And I also fill the wood grain in the fins. Here I did part of these fins. I just slapped some on there with my finger and I spread it. This is already dry. This is uh, the un, the unfilled part and this is the filled portions. And then after that, once you have the far, spiral line uh, filled, you will go ahead and begin to sand it. Don't use a heavy sandpaper, just something about a 120 grit should do. Or you can use a fine one. It may take a little while to knock this, uh, to knock it down. but nothing too heavy because you don't want to scratch into the body tube and you know mar the surface so just something really light to just knock down the uh the filler that you fill the uh, wood grain or spiral with and that'll be that'll be your first step do that with the whole model all four of the fins or three or whatever like all these models have had it done like this is a very old um this is scratch built little joe too uh, yeah little joe too scratch built so um all these fins were sanded and, and the bodies were the same deal. But this has a body wrap on it, so ignore this one. This is a wrap. This is from the Yitta, Yitta Wu uh, model Lil Joe 2 um, plans I found online, or somebody gave them to me, and I built it from that. But outside of that, go ahead, fill all the wood grain, fill the spirals, sand it down. Once you sand it down, you're gonna wanna wipe the surface clean. Like, I used damp paper towel and you wipe it clean do that a couple of times and touch it and make sure it's really clean before you begin to prime it's not a huge deal yet though but get it, that first one wipe down really clean look at it make sure there's no gaps that you may want to go back and fill in the wood grain after that's done go ahead and prime it hit it with a light coat of primer build that up about do about two or three coats of light primer spray it let it dry spray it let it dry do that a few times look the model over and you're probably going to have some more gaps in the wood grain so this is when you want to use wood filler again go ahead and fill those spirals it may be a little gap in there somewhere that you missed sometimes you can't see them so go ahead and fill that again just put a little on your finger or on a piece of wood something just something smooth not a whole lot just fill what needs to be filled and you will sand again with some more fine sandpaper or anything whatever you need I've used all everything you see here I use this is a uh, what's this 320 yes yeah, a piece of 320 grit I use sanding sponges you can use those um, you can use these sanding sticks I use those this is just a pack of sandpaper you can I just got this from Ace Hardware a little sanding block you can make your own block like I'll take a block of wood and uh, staple something to it and this is this is good for sanding big big areas like that or on here big big wood fins um, there's some fine uh, sandpaper on there you can also wet sand. I don't wet sand. I have used it, but to me, it, I didn't really need to. I don't really need to for what I do. I, I've done it. It makes it really smooth. It's nice, but I just kind of use the fine grit, and that kind of it gives me a nice result every time. So I don't really uh, wet sand that much. But it is a good technique. You know, it's a good technique to use also. So um, once you've got it all primed, that first layer of primer, look the model over, and you will want to. Like I said, fill those gaps. Any gaps that um you missed, fill those, sand it down, wipe it down again. Sometime you may get on the plastic part, you'll get this weird static electricity. I just bought a static cloth. And what that static does is it keeps dust held on to 
it'll hold on to the plastic part. That polyurethane creates this weird static. Um, I've seen it over the years, and I'm experiencing it right now with this nose cone right here. Um, I spray painted it, but I'm fine with this because there's some little flakes and flecks on here. It's from the static. It's a little little dirt pieces. It's not a common thing. I don't experience it that much, but over the years, I've seen it a couple times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this just with some light uh, sandpaper just to knock those little little dirt flakes off. So that's what I'll be doing today. So I'll do that. I'm going to sand that and knock that dirt off there. And then I'm going to spray paint it again with black. And I had the cloth, so I'll wipe it out sand it wipe it with the cloth and then spray it with the black again and that'll um probably it'll probably be a, uh, really smooth once i do that um other than that um yeah once you have your model all primed look it over the the, uh, the primer will show you any of the gaps and stuff you can also use bondo spot putty i forgot to bring that over here that's something else i use once in a while spot putty but like i said wood filler it's pretty good for um, stuff like this, any kind of wood filler. I'm really liking this Memwax stuff. It's easy to work with. Here it says no sanding needed, but I don't know about that. I have to sand, you know. I have to sand it, knock that down. And on these big fins, this is the Red Max I'm building. Um, I had this, I'm at the stage now where all the spirals filled. I'm just touching up the, you can probably see these little, little patches here. I'm just going back, and this is a filler. So I'm going to sand this down, and I'll hit it with primer look it over and just keep building it up the idea is to keep working it until it's smooth and sealed really until it's sealed up smooth so you want it as smooth as possible so that's what i'm going to do with this one today and the nose cone i'll be working that um i also have a phoenix missile um, that needs primer it's primed it need primer and i need a little bit more uh, filler so i'll be working on that and then i'm um, yeah look the model over and once you know it's smooth and it's all filled you can begin to add your colors. This is where you'll start masking off using that uh, t Tamiya paint, I mean Tamiya masking tape that I used before in my last video I showed you that. Use that um, and just cover up whatever has to be covered. If it's, if it's a single color you don't have to worry about masking. If it has multiple you know, colors like this you're gonna have to mask stuff off. Like I said this fin has been knocked off so this, this one is a little older but there's all masking jobs there. Just mask off the orange tips of those fins so that's an example of masking and that one fin is masked off so everybody know what masking is so that's kind of my process It's pretty much um build fill and you're just working it up until you're ready to add the final paint you want all those seams and spirals filled like i showed right here this hasn't been sanded yet but it will be you can see that line in there in the body tube i think simrock tubes don't really have a deep line um i noticed that their builds it still has a faint line and you you will need to fill it but it's not as bad as the SD's ones the SD's will have their the grooves are a little deeper so um so that's that when it comes to that and use like I said any kind of tool you need but keep your sandpaper grit like kind of on the higher side you don't want to go with this rough core stuff this is 80 grit unless you have thick layers if you have thick layers of um whoa if you have thick layers of filler then you may want to use something rougher like an 80 grit to knock that down but don't go too deep because balsa wood you don't want to start scarring you don't want to go too deep so well i i typically use the lighter stuff because i can have more control i can work that down and feel it and that's the other thing you're like feeling your way through this it's you know it takes a little practice i think like it took me years i never used to do it i remember but the models they're not as nice you want to feel those lines um you just get a nicer model like especially with the scale stuff and even the sport ones, they just look nice when all the uh, spirals are filled. Um, you notice the difference. I just I've been doing it for years and just picked up different techniques from other modelers. Like even I learned all this stuff through the tech manuals, and then just being an artist, you just get a feel for certain things. So, but anybody can do it though. This isn't a skill that you don't. Anybody can do this. Like anybody can do it. Fill the spirals, fill the wood grain, sand it down, prime it, sand it down again. Look for those, look for gaps, look for stuff that's opening, little splits and stuff like that. Fill those, put a little bit on your finger, it's non-toxic. Rub it on there with your finger, you get a better feel. Um, that's how I do it, that's how I do it. I just added this with my finger, this hasn't been sanded yet. This is the other, the Red Max I'm building, I'm building two of these you know, for, you know, they're gonna be two theme rockets, but yeah, for this will be sanded. And um, that's the process. Even before that, actually, I need to go back. Sand the uh, balsa first, it gets sanded first, and then prime everything. So, But overall, that is the general idea behind this, to get really smooth fins. So 
it almost looked like a piece of plastic almost like you can get them so smooth and then when you put your paint on it goes on really nice so and then even with painting there's a process to painting like nice even coats you want nice even coats of paint let mist i just missed the first coat let that dry go back out mist again you just keep building up layers you don't the paint these days i notice you can paint pretty much in one layer and get a nice job but i typically you know a couple coats yeah, i missed it go back miss it again and just build them up but the paint these days i notice it's it's pretty good um and i use i've been using this right here rust-oleum this is my primer i've been using this rust-oleum even though i do love testers and uh tamiya they make some nice paints but this stuff works for me this uh flat white primer and even i have this this is yellow it's some rust-oleum yellow. I, this is something I don't understand. This <laughs> paint and primer, I don't, I don't get it. I still prime, and I'm gonna, I treat it like it don't have primer. It's just my my way. This start coming out recently, I'm, but I don't know. Maybe somebody can educate me on paint and primer because I like the prime, and then I paint like paint and primer. I, I don't get it. Maybe it's I don't know, but I still prime. Um, and I want to continue to prime and then paint until I can't get used to painting. And then I guess you're saying that, I don't know. And then paint it again and leave it. I don't know. So if somebody know, drop a comment. But yeah, so that's my process to get, you know, fins and rockets built, you know, really nice. You know, this one's a little more beat up. This one, this one's a veteran right here. This rocket's flown many, many missions, many missions. And this is scratch built. This is before SD's released um, the Lil' Joe a few years ago. They released the Lil' Joe 2 which is cool. I like that they released it. <laughs> there I go. I like that they released it. I have a, have a couple of them in the packages. And this back here is just a um, scratch build. This is just a scratch build. Had an idea. Just took various parts, put some tanks, and it's called the People Space Corporation. <laughs> you know, kind of like, you know, have Thiokol decal on there. Just, this is like a, you know, the booster, and then you have your satellite or whatever is in this part up here. Yeah, just took a bunch of parts and really detailed one out. But same process was done on this, that main body, filled the spirals. And I actually have, and sometimes I'll see a little gap, and if you can live with it, that's what it boils down to. If you can live with the spiral and it don't bother you, then you're good. Like, sometimes I see a little spiral, like, I'm okay with that. But for the most part, I like to get them all filled. I like to get it all filled. So, wood filler, primer, paint. That's the process. And sanding, it's all it all works together. You got to get your feel for it. As long as you're getting a good result, then you know you got it. Fill those lines, fill that wood grain, and it's doable. Anybody can do this. So, thanks to that uh, subscriber who um, gave me this idea for the video. If you and guys have any ideas for videos, anything you'd like to see, a process you want to know on, on something like this, um, let me know. I'll try to um, incorporate it and bring a video to you. But this is my pro my process. Like I said, higher numbers, a finer grit. You know, don't go with that rough stuff. You don't want to scratch into it. Unless it's a thick piece of clumpy paint you're trying to knock off or a thicker piece of wood filler you want to knock off, then go with the higher stuff. And I typically t keep them fairly light. Like I said, 320 is cool. And use whatever, whatever you need. This is a 320 right here. And this is some sponges. I don't know what this number is on this one, but that's how I do it here. Model Rocks 321. Like, share, and subscribe. Especially subscribe, comment, drop a comment down below, ideas, anything you guys got. And I will be back with another video. And before we go, be sure to wear a mask like this when you are sanding because those fine powders, you don't want to breathe that stuff in. And also when painting, wear a respirator. And I wear gloves because I don't like to have to clean my hands and, you know, spray paint gets on there. It's kind of hard to clean off. So gloves. Mask like that for the uh, powders and respirator for spray painting. And there you go. Stay safe.